Yes, hi, my name is Alana. Um, I am currently a PGY2 house officer. I'm working at the Waitemata DHB and I'm currently on a general medicine run. Um, I guess Auckland is of course one of the biggest cities in New Zealand. Um, it's really vibrant here, um, there's so much to do. Uh, it, it's such a big city as well, there's so many places that you can visit. It's got a great sort of uh, cafe culture as well. Um, there's so many things that you can do with your friends and your family over the weekends. Um, and yeah, it's just so diverse in terms of um, different cultures. Um, and there's always different things like festivals um, and cultural performances and you get to learn a lot about, you know, different ethnicities as well. Um, and it's just one big great city and I love it here. <laughs> I think Auckland's a great choice, um, especially when you're starting out as a, a new graduate. Um, it's special in the sense that it's got four different hospitals that you can work in. Um, you know, in the Waitemata DHB, you've got uh, Waitakere Hospital and North Shore Hospital. You've got the Auckland Hospital and then the county's Manukau region as well. Um, and each hospital, I think, has something different to offer. Um, and you can get so much experience in, in each different hospital. Um, and you know, the advantage also is you've got Auckland Hospital with so many um, subspecialties um, and you get to be exposed to, to that and get so much more experience in teaching from there as well, um, which is I think the biggest um, advantage in terms of working in, in Auckland. I guess it is also one of the reasons why it's the most popular choice as well sometimes. It's, it's just great for training. Be prepared for traffic <laughs> it's got to be one big thing as well um, but I mean Auckland is such a, a well supported place um, you know when you come there will be people that you can turn to in terms of getting advice about you know how to kickstart you know whatever training program you have if there's any specialties or um, uh, programs that you are interested in there's always someone that you can talk to um, we've also got great um, medical education fellows uh, yeah there's such a you can get support from so many different people that was something I didn't really know initially but when I came up to Auckland you know I found out oh gosh there's so much support that you can find from so many places that you never really knew mm. um, so I think if you do move to Auckland uh, there will be definitely a lot of support available for you Oh gosh, proudest <laughs> moment or achievement? Um, to be honest, probably finishing medical school. <laughs> um, that has got to be my proudest moment, you know, after studying for so long and you finally get that piece of paper um, and you start working. Uh, yeah, that graduating was definitely my proudest moment. <laughs>
um, because you've got a whole bunch of specialties and very and a huge variety of specialties around you it's not so scary when you encounter something because there's always someone very senior that you can call that can give you a hand equally you're encouraged to take on um, responsibility and you're in, encouraged to kind of push yourself a bit to see you know give yourself opportunities so for example in neurology I learned how to do lumbar punctures and um, I, I did those uh, several times a week and and hematology they if you're keen you can you learn how to do bone marrow biopsies so there's a whole bunch of really interesting procedural stuff that I learned I got exposure to a whole bunch of um, presentations of diseases I'd never even seen before so from a learning perspective it was amazing and from a support perspective it was amazing and I mean I love Auckland so I mean everything that Melody said just um, completely shines through to me so Hi Nikki. Just uh, in regards to to Middlemore, um, I worked there on my PGY one year, and and like Carrie, I had a wonderful year. I uh, I would I would continue spending all my time there if I could, but unfortunately, as you pass PGY one, you have to start rotating around the other DHVs, and um, I'm currently at Starship actually. Um, but um, I guess Middlemore. Uh, I mean, middle was known as being, I don't know if it's really tr like true because I haven't worked everywhere, but it's known as being a slightly busier hospital. You get to do, well, you, you, I guess your days are usually filled with work, which is a really good opportunity to learn in my opinion. Um, you're constantly doing things and you're constantly getting the opportunity to see things and, um, and uh, you know, be part of like complex cases. Um, Middlemore has got some really cool, it doesn't have as many specialties as Auckland, but it does have the plastics department, which is fantastic. Um, uh, they've got a really good plastics department. Um, and just in general, I've found that the people there are extremely supportive. The, a lot of the consultants that work there are really well um, intentioned doctors. They really want to give back and that's why they work at a, at a um, you know, slightly busier than usual hospitals because that's that's what they want to do. They, they want to go to work and they want to do a good job. And I really feel that, and, you know, some days you leave work and you're like, wow, I'm really, really glad I've, I've, I've been here today. So that's yeah, a bit of my experience. Cool. And yeah, I guess um, I'm a bit newer to the whole <laughs> to the whole job than the other two. Um, so I can only speak on behalf of Waitemata where I've spent so far this year. But again, I've also loved my time so far. I found that one of the huge things has been the amount of support that I've had. And I think that's becoming from a bigger hospital. There's not only that support from the cohort around you in terms of, I guess, um, sharing experiences, um, but also learning off each other. But also I've found that there's a lot more senior support. So um, we have the medical edu education fellows who have been phenomenal, um, but also the SMOs have been really approachable um, and have, yeah, in, in terms of teaching opportunities and what I've been exposed to so far, that's been amazing as well. Um, I also think, yeah, North Shore has slightly less subspecialties than the other two, but um, still the ones I'm doing this year and yet to do, um, such as cardiology and urology, again, giving me a lot more depth of knowledge um, and then the opportunity to next year spread around is awesome. Um, I guess as well in terms of Auckland itself, I love the things that we can do outside of the hospital. So for me, um, I do a lot of sport outside the hospital. There's so many different teams um, to be involved in and sports. And then also in terms of, I guess, the food and the activities and things that you can do, uh, it keeps me busy outside. So I've really enjoyed that. For that, um, Harry, Nick and Max, Maxine for yeah, shining some light as to why you should work here with us. So yeah, now to get onto the recruitment process and how exactly you can do that. So yeah, so I'll talk briefly about this. So basically, yeah, important thing to note is that for the recruitment process here for the three regional DHBs, we don't actually have interviews. And that's purely because we do get quite a large number of applicants about 400 or so each year. So while we would love to get to know each of you individually, it's the time constraint does make it quite difficult. So instead of doing interviews, what we have instead is a ranking system. So as 
as long as you have uh, ranked at least one of the DHBs in the Auckland region as one of your preferences, we will receive your application to rank. And how we rank is so we use a combination of the ACE score and the PVTC or the Fit for Purpose Practitioner score. And for this ranking process, how it's done is it's carried out by quite a big group of PVTC members. So these includes intern supervisors, um, we have house officer representation, like our medical education fellows, as well as people from the educational training units that come out and help us with the ranking day. And in terms of the rank, we use the fit for purpose practitioner model, which is based on four domains of practice, because what we are really wanting is well-rounded doctors. And for each domain, you can get a score from negative one to a max score of three. So the total scoring that you would get is either from, is a range from negative four to 12. Now for the scores to be considered for employment, you must be satisfactory. So you must have a score of at least one for each of the different domains or quadrants. And say you, you were unsatisfactory for one of the quadrants, um, we will not be considering you for employment, even if you got like a three in another quadrant. So you have to be satisfactory for all of them at least. Cool. So this is what the fit for purpose practitioner model looks like. And it's divided into the four quadrants of clinical performance, team approach, personal development, and professionalism. So we get these scores from looking at your CV, your references, um, cover letters, etc. And for clinical performance, what we're what we're really wanting to see is, yeah, of course, how your grades were, like what differentiates you between a satisfactory or a good or excellent one is whether you had obtained awards, scholarships, topping your class scores, etc. And then for team approach, what we will look at is also your references and CV. And what will constitute like an excellent or a good score is whether there was evidence of you working well as part of a team. Maybe that could be um, doing an extracurricular activity where you're working together with other people. And then for personal development, um, so there's two aspects to this. So the first is of course, based on your career. So whether you had um, done things outside of your normal work, out of your normal work. So things like maybe had you done taster days? Did you do some audits, research or courses? Um, things like that. Otherwise, we also want to see that you have, yeah, yeah basically a work-life balance. So you're also pursuing your own personal interests. So maybe you do things like music, sports, or yeah, just to see if you're like a well-rounded individual. And then finally for professionalism, yeah, again, we'll look at your references, CV for things like that. Coming to Auckland was the best decision ever really, I mean I think it you know, grew me in a lot of other ways as well, made me more independent really quickly um, and just the quality of the teaching at Auckland is fantastic. With general paediatrics training, um, I think to become a good paediatrician you really need to get a good wide breadth of experience within different um, specialties including all the subspecialties, general paediatrics and intensive care and I think um, that's a huge opportunity that you can't get anywhere else um, being in Auckland. The training I've had at Auckland Hospital has really set me up for my future career in medicine regardless of what I choose. 
I've been able to rotate through some really good specialties in each one. I've learned a lot. I get a lot of interesting infectious diseases out here um, and things like um, you know, Kawasaki disease and rheumatic fever. You don't come across one day that's um, the same as the next. So often we'll be doing a ward round if we're on gynaecology um, and then do some time in theatre and then talking to patients, making them feel you know, like they've been heard and listened to. So you're getting taught from, uh, from the best at the best and uh, on a daily basis, uh, you're not far away from a consultant who can answer your question as a house officer. We can do almost everything here, transplant, all kinds of surgeries, and I think that is one of the perfect places to work, live, and even learn everything. One of the reasons that I came up to Auckland was um, it's a bigger city, it's lots more to do. Uh, you get some fantastic uh, visiting shows, artists from all over the world coming here. It's, it's, it's really stands up on an international stage. Outside of work, I'd say my time is is dominated by some paddleboarding, um, mountain biking. If it's uh, if the surf's not up in the, in the morning, um, so there's lots of things to see and do. Lots of weekends away in Auckland or in and around Auckland. I mean, speaking for myself for the last you know, few months, there's just so much that you don't see in other places that yeah, professionally and you know, medically is, I think, pretty hard to beat, probably in New Zealand and probably lots of other places in the world as well. So. So now we, yeah, now I like to ask our lovely armor reps to talk more about what a day in their life is like. So basically what it's like to work at the hospitals in the Auckland region. Again, why you chose Auckland and yeah, also talk about things like the training here as well. And finally, what advice would you give to yeah, your the new PGY1s and your future colleagues? So over to you first, Harry. Sure. Um, so I think um, it depends on um, what run you're on. So for example, um, I did uh, mostly medical runs, um, but when you, you start the day and you, you meet with your registrar and your consultant and on a medical run, you run through the, the list of the patients and, and then you, you, you go on the ward round and then after that you divvy up jobs and, and basically that takes you through the day and uh, then you'll go on call sometimes, probably about once a week. That's when you cover a bit more broadly. So um, at Auckland, for example, you uh, cover the, uh, if you're a specialty house officer, you cover all of the medical specialties, which is really exciting. Um, but there's always a specialty registrar on between the hours of four and 10. So you've always got someone to escalate to. But it does give you a lot of exposure to, I remember, you know, um, being paged about you know renal transplant patients and being like wow this is really cool and then to be a renal registrar around being like okay mate this is what you need to do so um i i that's probably why i chose Auckland because i wanted to have the exposure to um you know whether it be auckland city or whether it be counties or, or even north shore that you i wanted to have the level of exposure that you get at auckland to a vast range of specialties because Going forward in, in my career, I wanted to have, you know, a, whether I, what, whatever I, I go into, whether it's medicine or general practice or, or surgery, want to have a good knowledge and broad knowledge of everything. And, and the relationships that you form actually in, in, in the Auckland region is really good because these, these are some of the experts in the field. Um, so I, I really wanted to, to come to Auckland. I was very fortunate to, to get there. So, um, my advice for um, incoming PGY1s is that, you know, you're going to feel like a bit of a fish out of water when you first start and, and you, you, you're going to feel like you don't know anything. And, um, and that's completely normal. And just ask and also get stuck in. And if there's something that you really like, like if there's a specialty you're super interested in, like let that be known. And, um, and the level of support and mentorship that you get, particularly at these hospitals, someone will come and support you and, and you know, your, your supervisors and, and we'll, we'll, I've been surprised about how much, um, sorry if I'm rambling, I've been surprised at how much just 
expressing an interest in something to an SMO or, or a registrar can then lead to discussions with other people and, and opportunities. So um, I really think it's been second to none. I really, really enjoyed um, my time. Um, I can talk about a um, little more. So same as same as Harry um, in terms of all the, you know, the work that works very similar. I'd say the one thing that uh, maybe middle has a little bit more of is you do carry the resource page or um, so you go to a few more of the resources, which you know may or may not be a thing. I quite liked it. Um, the um, uh, yeah, the jobs are much the same in between the DHBs. You know, they're team based. You have a registrar and a consultant, and you do the ward rounds, and you might do admitting sometimes, and, and then it's after hours and whatnot. I chose Middle War because I was there as a fourth year and I loved it and I wanted to go back. I think Middle War has got um, a very diverse workforce. Um, there's a lot of different languages, there's a lot of different backgrounds, there's a lot of different challenges, um, which is you know, something I enjoy. Um, Auckland, I think, also has really good support, like Harry was saying, the Auckland region. Um, and um, I think when you're starting, yeah, that's one thing that, you know, it's understandably to be nervous about um, to be working in a new um, uh, in a new sort of job, and um, you know you've got expectations and responsibilities and whatnot. Um, in terms of advice for new PGYs, everyone's different. Um, I would, I mean, one thing I took out of the first job I ever did is it takes about three months to get your head started, you, like, or your head grounded, like in terms of what you're doing. So. So like being patient is like, you know, don't worry if, you know, the first day something goes wrong, like it's normal. it takes a few months to like feel it all, like, you know, what you're doing and, um, and it's, that's normal, so, yeah. Oh, and yeah, I can just, I guess, add some pieces about Washamata specifically from my experience. So yeah, day in the life, very similar across all DHBs in some respects, I think. Um, again, with North Shore, you often have an on-call each week and I've done medicine and now I'm on to surgery. So I've got a good kind of experience of, I guess, both of the on-calls so far. Um, I, yeah, I found that at North Shore, I've had a lot of independence on those shifts. So what, while there's always been registrars and a lot of support around to escalate, as Harry said, if you need, um, I found that, you know, in terms of you're doing a lot of admitting and will calls independently, and that's given me a lot of, I guess, chance to grow by my, myself and do a lot of learning as well. Um, I've also noticed that North Shore in particular, and this is one of the reasons I chose it, there's a huge, it's, I think it's the largest catchment area um, of all the DHBs. And for that reason, I think you see a lot of really interesting pathology. And that's definitely something that I noticed when I did my fourth year here, but also that I've noticed while working here as well, the number of kind of rare uh, conditions and yeah, pathologies that I've seen has been really, uh, really interesting and really good for my learning. Um, why I chose Auckland uh, and North Shore. So yeah, similar to Nick, I, I spent fourth year at Waitemata and I um, also was lucky enough to do a bit of time at both Auckland and um, counties as well. But I found just, I was really well supported there. Um, I Everyone I came across, I really loved. Um, and they were really supportive of my sport and the things I did outside of medicine, which I really appreciated as well. And again, I um, like some of the patients and experiences I had there, I found were really fascinating and great teaching as well. Um, in terms of advice, so yeah, those guys, they've kind of touched on some really good advice. I think what I would add to that is just that we do, it's a really cool job. I think we're in a really privileged position and we're dealing with people at their most vulnerable and we can actually make a huge impact on their life. Um, and I think that's something that I keep being reminded every day. Um, and, you know, day in, day again, I think you have these really unique experiences where you feel like you can actually change something for the good. And I think we shouldn't underestimate that. We should make the most of that. Yeah. Um, do you have any tips for people who want to move from Auckland, sorry, move to Auckland from outside of the region, i.e. from Otago Medical School? Um, is there anything that they can do to strengthen their application? Perhaps, perhaps just a teaser to an answer to that question is that I, I don't think there should be, there would be any difference between where they're coming from in terms of the med skills, right? Yeah, that's correct, Quinton. Yeah, we just treat everyone the same. It's just the ranking score that we use. Yeah, which hospital do you reckon has the best food out of the three? Unequivocally, Auckland. 
unequivocally, no questions asked. It is it is really good. Middle Middlemore has has a better um uh I'd say they have a better sweet sweet bar. But the, the salad bar is much nicer at all. What do you think, Maxine? You're gonna stick up <laughs> right there. Well, I feel like white are not as nice and consistent. There's always a good, you know, there's a good snack range. There's always a good baking as well, actually. It's, it's yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> People say that Middlemore house officers are overworked. Um, is there any truth in that? I I think like, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that people can say. I, I, personally, I haven't found that. Um, maybe some people have had that experience. Um, it's a little bit tricky. I mean, it's just, I think you want to balance between working enough to get good experience and um, also not being worked, you know, so you're like overly stressed and whatnot. But I think I think you find that everyone, you know, people at every DHB can get stressed and burnt out and overworked and all this sort of thing. I don't think it's just middle more. You certainly have some like really busy days, but on the whole, most days are totally fine. Um, yeah, there is the odd day that, you know, you're, you're running the whole day, but it doesn't happen that frequently. So so I think probably what people, what, the people that say that have had like one or two days and just, you know, expand that to mean it all the time, but actually it's very doable 99% of the days. So. Is the ranking score the same across all three, eight, three DHBs? Um, just want to touch on something you said there, Melody, earlier in your presentation about only selecting one of the hospitals um, for Auckland, um, but look, my from from my perspective, I encourage you all to rank um, the three DHBs that you want to work for in the Auckland region, um, regardless. Um, but um, is the ranking across at the same across all the DHBs? I think they operate off the same framework, don't they? Yeah, that's right. So we yeah have the same ranking process. So basically, we have like a one or two ranking days where there's a group of us. So there's like a you know, mix of medical education fellows, um, you know, people from the clinical training units and intern supervisors and also NIA reps where we all get together as a group and we each have a certain amount of candidates to rank. So yeah, basically it's the same process that we use, which is the fit for purpose practitioner model. And we usually do cross check each other's rankings as well to make sure there's no like harsh markers or easier markers as well. Another question specific for you is around rotations. Um, so how flexible is movement between hospitals for second year for specific runs? For example, um, applying to Auckland City Hospital PGY1, but also interested in plastics at Middlemore. So that's a good question. So of course, for second year, you can start going rotating and going to other hospitals. So what usually happens is every year we send out this continuing employee survey. So around July-ish each year, and you can select the run blocks that you want. So yeah, usually you will get one of the run blocks that you preference. Um, but Otherwise, there's always the chance for you to send through run swap requests, which we do try to accommodate if possible. Um, I've had no trouble. Um, so I went from Auckland. Um, I'm going, I'm currently at North Shore and I'm going to counties um, in the second half of the year. And um, it's actually quite a streamlined process. So I've, I've had no issues at all. And I've had friends that have done, you know, um, medicine in, in Auckland and, and then gone on to do uh, plastics and relief at, at counties and and so you know you 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 do get a, a wide variety and actually there's a quite a huge list of things and run options available so you just rank one of them or rank several of them and then um, most people get most people get what they want. Um, another question is how do we how do you manage parking um, it might be different at each of the three DHBs so anything that you want to contribute with regards to parking for doctors um, during the day and also during the evening, safety and security, and those types of things. I can talk about, yeah, so Waitemata so far has been real easy. So you get a parking card when you start working there. Um, it's $3 a day. So there's a parking building, but there's also some parking kind of up the street more. And yeah, there's there's a good range of parking. Um, 
normally if you get there before eight which you pretty much do for every run <laughs> you have to be there before eight anyway um you'll easily get a park I've had no issues at all um yeah so it's been really easy and you can come from anywhere Very yeah. nice. little more's got um good good parking as you catch the train because the train um I, I live near the train line which is great um and it goes right outside um I think, yeah, I think minimal parking is $10 a week. Or it might have gone up to like ten fifty or something or $11 a week um, or $4 a day or something. $4.50 it might be now. Um, but um, the other question, like moving around Auckland, this is worth thinking a tiny bit about, you know, maybe about where you live and how you're going to get to places because the commutes in some parts of Auckland can be quite long. And um, after a long day of work, it's nice not to just be driving. But, but um, my commute is very reasonable very manageable so where do you think the sweet spot is in Auckland to live um if you're rotating around the three DHBs any central. particular area that's been discussed yeah. central <clears throat> um yeah I live I live centrally and I actually um probably didn't get prepared enough for the parking question because I actually only take public transport to work <laughs> all good, Harry, no worries are long-term ties to Auckland region seen as an advantage or will someone new to the region be disadvantaged in their application? So, no, we don't look at that as part of our ranking process. So, yeah, it won't be disadvantaged if you're new to the region. How do you go about applying for leave and for important questions like weddings overseas? Congratulations. Where can we get more information about this? And does this differ between the three hospital sites? Um, so generally, um, the earlier you place leave in, the better. I have actually not had any issues with leave placement. Um, uh, I've actually, uh, uh, you kind of, I, I mean, I remember when I applied for my relief run at Waitemata, they emailed me quite early and said, look, is there any like particular weekend you want off? And I said, look, I've got a friend's wedding. Is it all right if I have this one off? And they said, yeah, no worries, but an hour later. So there was, there was no trouble actually. So I, I haven't had any major issues with that. Um, or you, you get all the information very early on. So when you get accepted to the DHB, you, they send through a, a big pack about like who to email for leave requests and, and the process and how to sign up to it. So it's, and, and, kind of at orientation as well they talk about it so it, it's all quite um uh, very easily structured and guided I think that's the case for all three of them what happens for PGY1s who first come through to us we have a centralized um RMO unit advisor who takes on all PGY1 leave applications um, and this can be once you're accepted um, into the DHB until you're loaded into what we call the RMO leave kiosk and that's where you can start requesting any leave that you're wanting. Um, the RMO unit advisors are the one who manage your leave um, prior to going into the leave kiosk, so they'll have discussions with you. So if you do have an occasion in the future for 2023 that you're wanting um, leave booked for, um, email the dedicated person who um, you'll get notified about, and then they can enter it in and let you know if it's possible or not. How would you describe the support that you get from the administration staff RMO office um, or RMO unit at each of the DHBs? Any difficulties requesting leave um, or not organising enough cover for doctors who are away sick? Um, I can start just because I feel like <laughs> Harry just spoke. Um, yeah, I mean, again, pretty new. So I, I get similar to Harry, I haven't had too many issues yet. I did get in quite early with some leave and I found that if it's something that's really important to so say for a wedding or, um, you know, for a really important tournament or something, if you can talk to them in person, you know, often they will, they will do what they can to move things around. I think definitely, I imagine for the other two DHBs as well, it's been really difficult this year with people, so many staff being off sick. So I don't know if the representation of this year would be a fair representation because I think we've had so many people away with COVID and isolating. And so that's made it really difficult. But I've, I've found that whenever I've approached them in person, um, they've been really responsive to that. Okay. Um, um, I just, uh, I was just thinking, people, I think people do occasionally have problems at Middle War. Um, it's not like that unreasonable. And, and obviously when people are sick, um, it does make it hard for the RMO unit because, you know, they, they often have one or two people that might be on 
short notice relief, but they don't have like, you know, there's like a bunch of so calls, like five or six, so they're not going to be able to cover that. Um, one of the things I've noticed, at least on some of the runs I did, the teams are really, it was quite collegial within, within your department. So especially on the departments that you have more than two house officers per team, often house officers, you know, if they were able to, would help with the other teams that were busy or with, um, um, with other teams. And that's something that, you know, is actually really cool when that happens. Um, it's something that we can do. Um, the, you know, they, they do they do, do things like pay for cross cover and stuff for people that you know need that financial incentive. Um, and um, uh, yeah, there, there, there's always there's always going to be problems, and there, there have been a few over the last you know COVID years. Yeah, for sure. I, I completely agree. I think you know, um, COVID has made things challenging, and and um, you know, there, there have been. Uh, there's difficulties with that and and some and a lot of that is unavoidable you know there is only a certain amount of relief um, pool available but I wanted to touch on something that happened last year and that I um, my mum actually had to go into urgent surgery and I I rang the RMO unit and I said look um, can I just have like a day off and I just to go down and they said you can take the whole week off like this is so important and I like honestly, that, that really just, that really made, it just felt so, it was so human and so lovely. And I felt really supported by both the service and the, and the RMO unit with that particular thing. So like, you know, there's going to be unavoidable things when it comes to COVID and sick leave, but you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, people are human. Um, question for Melody, can your rank score change between DHBs if you're writing three separate cover letters? Uh, so yeah, this won't change. You just get the same score. We'll just read the four three cover letters and just give you like a, yeah, it will just be one score across all of it. If you're applying to the three DHBs in, in, in the Auckland region and you're ranking all three of them, um, then um, what Auckland is requesting is that you write one cover letter um, that is addressed to um, either the pre-vocational pre committee or to Melody. Um, just one cover letter um, for each of those three slots that you apply for Auckland, Otamata and Counties. Um, so you actually don't need to write separate cover letters for um, for for the Auckland region, um, though that is different uh, for the other DHBs around New Zealand. Yeah, so for cover letters, yeah, we do, we would like, if you can, for just one cover letter for you to upload. It just makes it easier for us to yeah, just to review and to rank it. Um, so yeah, if at all possible, one cover letter, please. And to for addressing, yeah, Auckland Region DHB, yeah, that's fine. We do have, since the PVTC Ranking Selection Committee can be made up of several people, yeah, there could be, and there could always be multiple people that will look over your documents as well. So yeah, Auckland Region DHB, that's, Buying or to whom it, to whom it may concern, that would do too. Um, are there any facilities for cycling into each of the hospitals? I hope you don't cycle into the hospital, but <laughs> I guess it's on the way to the hospital. So is um, there secure parking and, and lockups for the, for the bikes? I, I can answer for Auckland and Middlemore. I bike today in Auckland. It's very good, very easy. And at Middlemore is the same. Is it easy and possible to move from Auckland DHB to another DHB, i.e. outside of the Auckland region, uh, for PGY 2 or 3? Yep, so um, how we've been doing it um, pre-1 July is that you would need to resign from your position at, in the Auckland region and apply for a job down in Christchurch or Wellington or whichever DHB you're wanting. Um, preferably you would have a job offer before you resign. Um, don't don't risk it. Um, and if you're wanting to come back to the Auckland region, you'll need to reapply either to one of our expressions of interest or um, during the annual recruitment cycle, which is happening at the moment. So that would be the same for most of the DHBs, if not all. Um, so how many positions are there across the three DHBs? I'm not too sure, has that, has that been finalised yet, Ursula, or? It's still going through. Um, 
if I'm thinking of last year's numbers, we had 63, 64, 64 or something yeah, yeah. along those lines. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. If you rank all three DHBs as preferences, one, two, and three, are you more likely to get a spot with with an Auckland or more likely to miss out on all three? Depends how you score in your ranking. <laughs> so it's the DHB ranking that would be the ultimate decider on that one. Um, so how easy is it to come back into Auckland as a PGY2 if you worked somewhere else as a PGY1? So yeah, for this, you really have to apply through the annual recruitment cycle, which, well, is actually currently open at the moment. So each year we have it open from about like mid-May to mid-June where you can submit an application. And again, Similar to like PGY1s, we also use their ranking system for PGY2s as well. Um, yeah, using the same model. So yeah, so pretty easy, but yeah, you just need to apply to the annual recruitment cycle. Otherwise we do sometimes have ad hoc recruitment that we do as well. Um, so yeah, always good to keep an eye out on our Auckland doctors page to see whether we're hiring or to express your interest. Sometimes with um, coming into the Auckland region, we may not have positions available in quarter one and quarter two, but more often than not, quarter three and quarter four will have positions available. How are background checks done as part of the application progress uh, process? What red flags do you look for? Um, you want to just talk a little bit about the onboarding and anything to add about criminal background checks, things like that, Ursula? Sure, interesting question. Um, we, when you apply into the region and similarly to the ACE process, you do need to declare, um, there gives you an option there to declare if you've had a criminal record, um, any health records that you would wish to disclose, um, any issues with council or other um, authorities. And from there, if we feel like we need to have further information, we'll contact you directly to get that information. Um, that is then um, shared with the PVTC um, Ranking and Selection Committee. Um, and then from there, if it's deemed that we need um, further approval to hire that individual, we will send it off to the CMOs for their approval. So um, I'm not sure what you mean by red flags. I mean, anything could be a red flag. Um, but it just depends how severe and um, whether there's been any, I guess, um, remediation or anything that's happened since whatever has happened or not happened. Um, we do also do police background checks as well. So that gets completed as for anyone who joins um, employment in the region. That's right. In continuation to the background check question, um, what about YouTube or social media presence? No, this just, yes, yeah, quite a few applicants. <laughs> I don't think we would do that. No, to my knowledge, we've never done that. <laughs> Once you start applying for other future positions with other DHBs, recruiters will start to look at your social media profiles and things like that, just to get an idea of who you are. Um, it's how we do our sourcing. It's how we, um, you know, and complement and implement part of our recruitment systems as well. But we don't necessarily do it for the ACE process because there is a large number of students who are applying bulk at the same time. Keep the dodgy stuff off site. I would just like to say thank you to all of our panelists for um, attending today. Um, Melody and Ursula from um, Northern Regional Alliance, um, thanks very much for taking your time. Uh, Maxine, Harry and Nick, Thanks very much for spending your time today as well, just to share your experiences. Um, it's been really valuable for the students. Um, for now, anything final to add at all from the team? All the best with your applications. And hopefully we'll see you in the Auckland region. Well, hi there, Kaki Te Have a nice evening.